I deal with chronic unwellness that is mostly centered around migraines, um, but also an associated neck pain, um, shoulder, head um, inflammation in the body, kind of fibromyalgia type symptoms, um, chronic f fatigue is something that I sort of go in and out of or it's all kind of mixed up and um, that's a basic rundown um, and I've had migraines since I was 18 uh, so about for about 30 years now um, they've gotten worse since I've had children uh, so in the last probably uh, 10 to 17 years they have progressed where I get them more often um, and that can be super intense so I've raised my children while being what I would personally term chronically unwell a lot of the time but because migraines are very um, unknown area still um, and a lot of people just sort of don't really know what it can be like just some people think it's just like a bad headache and sometimes yes I get headaches too or migraine can be like a bad headache but there's so much more so much more involved and there are really terrible horrible ones which I just personally term class A migraines and then there's a whole variety of lower form and just various ways you can experience them whether you have this kind of aura which I think is an interesting term because spiritually we talk about our auras right and um, our energy field and they might um, energy might feel or look like these waves around us and when you have a migraine aura it's like this sort of blankety wave overcomes you and you can be super sensitive to uh, sound and um, sight and you can have sort of slightly blurred vision or it's just this major disruption in your field <laughs> in a way um, but that you experience physically and added to that there's this really interesting link that I have found personally that's probably not published anywhere <laughs> uh, between you know being spiritual being psychic um, feeling energy being an empath uh, being an energy sensitive how that can be linked also to migraines um, headaches head pain and also that um, sort of aura like uh, symptoms because when you are an empath you are feeling not just feeling everybody but you're taking it on your physical body and that can happen in various ways so I do believe that me being an empath has only exasperated um, the the migraine situation, the chronic unwellness, um, to another level, and I don't believe that's the same for everybody. But those who have that, you, and you will relate in your own way. So if you're an empath, you might, for example, feel nausea if someone's got nausea, and um, that would be being a physical empath. So I am a physical empath, and that comes through sometimes when I do give readings. I'm able to. Uh, sometimes give medical information but apart from that not just the medical information it's feeling people's heavy emotions and experiences and really taking that on I'm literally channeling a person's energy through my body system and I know that that has been a part of it as well um, but over the years I have definitely gotten better at learning how to manage that and so I know so much more now and through my experiences that's how I can uh, help others but there's also that side of energy sensitivity where I mentioned just before the migraine aura and and uh, when you have a migraine you are sound sensitive you can't really be around loud noises and you just really want to go to a quiet dark room and hibernate <laughs> um, but my sound sensitivity has also been absolutely blown out of proportion it's like it's on steroids just for the fact of being um, so open psychically and clear audiently through the ears hearing the frequencies so those of you hearing you know the frequency sounds the ringing in the ears and so many experiences through the ears 
um, and also being an energy sensitive. You're sensitive about your environment, uh, people, everything. And so it's just like this Molotov cocktail of, of hyper um, sensitivity um, and stimulation from everywhere. So for example, if I have a bad migraine and even there was this one time I could hear my son uh, eating his cereal but the sound of the spoon hitting the bowl from even though I was in another room to me was like torture being in a torture chamber it was like it was like being in a surround sound system in a cinema full Monty and it was terrible it's that it's like a drill in your head and so um it's amplified and so I find that um, sometimes with migraines I have that sound sensitive well quite often but also outside of migraines so um, that it's it's being an energy sensitive um, where it's too much noise too much stimulation and I, I can't cope and being an empath it's too much it's overwhelming so for example if you've got a child tugging on you you've got um, someone tapping you and there's um um, noise from somebody's phone ringing and then in another room there's music on and I'm trying to concentrate on cooking and there's a sound from outside that's too much that can just absolutely be like way too much so some of you might relate and connect to that as well um, but in terms of my experience um, being me <laughs> with this chronic unwellness it's just yeah it can really get overwhelming at times so um, I value more than ever just peace harmony serenity and silence and that's one of the things that this has taught me to also the importance of silence and when you go there how that feels when you're calm when things are silent when you just listen to the sounds of the birds well on a migraine day birds can be torturous <laughs> but otherwise they are lovely and beautiful and, and God's gift to us nature so it's coming back to serenity and that's one thing that this experience has taught me having sort of suffered from this um, intense pain and unwellness that just absolutely can be debilitating whether it be for a day three days you know a week or or two like just merciless days days in a row it's horrible um, but it's like a silent illness because for the most part people just don't get it so <laughs> I have found that um, you know friends and other people around don't quite sort of get it um, don't realize or think about it in its full integrity uh, so if someone has a what's termed as a you know proper illness um, that is you know also horrible and debilitating such as Parkinson's cancer muscular dystrophy or whatever there are there are so many and you know and they have a, a name and people understand um, to some degree uh, that they are bad and um, and often uh, people who suffer from those conditions are sort of honored and looked after in that in that way um, and then there are other more silent kind of <laughs> horrible unwellness um, symptoms and whatever you want to call it, illnesses, um, where people really suffer and it's not seen or understood or uh, people around might think, well, you know, come on, get on with it or just not be considerate. I think that's probably one of my major issues is not be considerate of the fact. So, for example, if someone always expects you to attend their parties and they never go to think, oh, she might be feeling unwell that day. <laughs> Little things like that. That's probably been my chief disturbance um, over the years. Um, just that consideration. Um, and so, and just a feeling of being seen and um, having a sense that someone else could be like, okay, um, that must be really hard or to be in those shoes because someone like myself and many of you being empaths and uh, intuitive, you constantly feel what it's like to be in someone else's shoes and empath empathize and with their situation and, and you suffer for it because you, you feel it so intensely and, um, and you know, even sometimes physically, energetically. So... Uh, it's almost like a slap in the face in the way and it's interesting because I'm someone who I do not like attention on me and um, I don't like I'm I find it difficult to talk about 
my migraines because um, because I've gone through it for so long and I've suffered so much and so deeply and privately with it that it's hard to express it um, and I don't like to talk about it for example when people are just like oh how are you I'll be like yeah I'm good you know I'm not gonna say oh I'd be all miserable and be like Betty Downer because <laughs> uh, I don't like that either but then it, sometimes it would feel inauthentic to uh, not mention it it's like the old parrot um, sort of situation where people say hi how are you it's just really an extension of saying hello <laughs> but for some people who would take it literally how am I oh I'm great today oh I'm awful I'm depressed <laughs> you know but often we don't say it of course and it might depend who we're talking to whether it's a close friend or <laughs> that we feel safe with or um, you know someone we don't know so so well <laughs> or someone we don't want to be talking to for too long so um, you know but generally yeah, I do keep to myself and I really appreciate um, the people in my life who just know. And that's all I need is you just know this is my predicament um, and and almost like that's it. It's just um, don't be like, oh, I hope you get better soon because I'm just going to get unwell again. So um just basically know and understand and I don't have to go into any kind of vivid detail but I just feel um, that like so much better with that for example I have a friend who will be like I'm sorry you've gone through that and we'll get on with our conversation <laughs> or like just like to be seen for that little moment without me dwelling on all my pain and misery which I don't do and I don't share with people um, and so every now and again I get frustrated like anybody would about anything when you keep it to yourself, right? And it's like um, you're going through all this <laughs> horrible torture and it's pretty much outside of your immediate family uh, who might not always understand either. It's, it's just, yeah, it's a pretty miserable existence. So um, I've wanted to make a video for quite some time about this topic, but... Uh, it's never a priority subject um, and sometimes I just stumble as to what to say but finally I've taken a walk today after I think probably about almost two months I have not gone out for a walk um, firstly it was just preparing for Christmas time just got busy and then in um, January and I don't remember my migraine status in December right this second but in January um, it, it gets really hot it's summer here in Australia and spending time with my family and we went through some heat waves and I went through migraine phase and then we had a little small holiday away and I was feeling pretty good on most of the holiday days which was great um, and yeah then because of the heat wave you just get completely knocked out and when you're a person who goes through unwellness you kind of feel those things extra so I'm out having my first walk and it felt horrible not being able to go for a walk all I really try to do is try to do half an hour as many times as I can during a week. I don't pressure myself, but sometimes if I can only walk for 10 minutes, I do that. And there's many days I just can't. Um, so it's just so nice because I feel like it's kind of like getting back to normal. Right now, I've um, so after the January school holidays, so here in Australia, kids are on holiday throughout the whole of January. Um, after that period, the whole time, I'm constantly thinking about all the things I need to do in my business and how I feel so behind um, and it kind of like torments me and when I'm unwell, it really torments me. <laughs> so um, I try sometimes not to think about it and, um, and to sort of be calm and just take it easy and go easy on myself and, and that really does help me and I do need to do that. So I've come a long way in that respect too. But sometimes, especially when it's just been a few days in a row or it's all gotten too much, um, I just pretty much terrorise myself um, and sort of pressure myself. And sometimes I forget, well, hang on, I'm in this sort of boat of unwellness and so I can't do or be accepted to do everything or things, you know, on in in a time frame that I would like. and things like that and that really disturbs me and annoys me um, and so it's really hard and so um, having said all that I generally do have a pretty positive attitude 
it's just my natural disposition and through my spirituality these days I am more calmer and that's that energy that you will often feel in my videos and so on um, and that's really what I've grown into uh, and that helps me so much um, and then on the other end of the spectrum when I'm really overthinking and overanalyzing things or just feeling the pressure of all this build up of my to-do list is completely overwhelming because if I wasn't say for example building my spiritual course academy and um, then I would and just sort of being you know a mum and maybe having a casual job or whatever I probably wouldn't have as much stress <laughs> um, but um, so stress is something that I do and have worked on um, as I was saying before but even living a simple family life you are always busy as a mum and it can be overwhelming even that just you know going and getting groceries and cleaning the home and going on errands and taking care of the family's needs and all of those things so that could be a full-time job in itself and when you are going through chronic unwellness it's difficult to even do that because after a number of shitty crappy days um, things pile up and not everyone can do what you need to be doing um, for you always so um, you know you have to just catch up with basic things around your home and in your life let alone anything else so then it kind of feels like you're on this treadmill and instead of just easing in to the day uh, which really is the ideal way and I do do that sometimes too and I take things off the list and I'm not OCD and you know try to keep some sense of order but at the same time things can get chaotic pretty quick as you know having a family so um, anything that piled on top of that even the stresses of everyday life and bills and all that sort of that annoying stuff um, can be a lot for any person to take so when you put chronic unwellness on top of it, it really can be just soul destroying. So um, I just do the best that I can do and I really have a motto one day at a time and if I'm having a really awful day, I just think to myself, tomorrow's a new day and that is really honestly what, what gets me through and because I've gone through this, this is how I get through anything in life when things come up. Um, so I record my migraines um, and for quite a few years now I've been having too many and so at the end of the year I count all my migraine days that I've marked on the calendar and for quite a number of years now it's been, so for example for 2021 it was 130 migraine days and it kind of, when I see that number, I go into this kind of shock and I have a really depressing kind of emotional day because um, I realize the impact and how severe that is. And I'm thinking, well, why am I so hard on myself? That's a third of my life. So if you can imagine a third of your life being um, a migraine or day, um, I loosely call it a migraine day, which could be a variant of things. Um, yeah, that freaking sucks <laughs> so bad. Um, and so when I, and that's when it's like you realize, you know, um, even, not that I don't know, but you really see it. And so it's kind of like when you feel that chronic unwellness and, kind of, and it just fatigues your whole body. And I remember I used to feel when I saw when I was raising children when they were younger, they're, they're teenagers in high school now, but um, still very <laughs> needy and it's still very busy. Um, but yeah it was really really difficult and I was a fully dedicated mum I really believe in that I believe in being there um you know as close to full time as you can with your children and um you know and I did that I just had a very small casual job at some point um I really believe in that and um but it drained the shit out of me <laughs> because uh, not only do, does that happen anyway to anyone raising children at home um, it's pretty you know intense and it's demanding and it's non-stop and you never get a break there's no weekends there's nothing it's just one day after another you don't know whether it's Monday or Sunday or whether you're Arthur or Martha it's just all mixed up um, and so when you're undergoing illness unwellness 
it's it's terrible it really is and I recall even when I was pregnant having horrible migraines and I was crying and crying because I didn't want, didn't want to take the medicine for it which they actually called it was there was a class a category that they said was okay for pregnancy and breastfeeding but I was just terrified that I would like do you know do something to the baby and I wouldn't take it and I was in so much pain and it was really terrible um, and yeah I struggled through that through breastfeeding and breastfeeding is something that I really believe in and I was so passionate about to the point I was it was like I have to no matter what I have to breastfeed my children and it was just so important to me personally so I did breastfeed for the first couple of years of their lives and um, I felt really proud and good about that um, in, a, in a humble sort of motherly way it was really important to me but um, yeah that I think took a toll as well and I just kept persevering persevering really persevering through everything um, and then when your children are very young and running around and so demanding and you know really so much knee it's just absolutely exhausting and if you have a migraine on top of that and little children they don't understand if you're sick <laughs> at all <laughs> um, sometimes big kids don't even um, so yeah so I've gone through all of that this kind of silent suffering because then when you you know, get together with, you know, friends and rellos and relatives. Um, I don't know, it's just like people just forget or just don't know. Or I don't know. And like I said before, it's just this thing I have gone through in the past. It's, it's I'm not looking for attention. I really don't even like that. And I don't want to be talking about it much either. Um, but just that feeling of just knowing, <laughs> like, like someone knows someone has diabetes and they would, you know like just put that in consideration <laughs> it's just bizarre anyway um but I've come a long way with all of that and um I don't think about it as much as before but maybe COVID has done that because you know there's been so much time away from people so I've actually loved that aspect when you have children also it's difficult any kind of unwellness um like the chronic fatigue is something I also suffered from and just those kinds of like fatigue and inflammation feelings at sore bones like so many nights of sore bones all night tossing and turning on the couch uh, on the bed um, just yeah it's just horrible and then having to get up to really early in the morning because you, your youngest child wakes up and they're so demanding you know, they don't want to see you just falling asleep on the couch. You need to be watching Dora with them, making breakfast, playing Play-Doh. It's just, I just felt so debilitated a lot of the time. But um, being a good mum and therefore my kids was really important for me. And I just tried the best that I could and I did everything with my kids. Um, I had days too where I was just completely out of it and um, just surviving. <laughs> um and I remember when my kids were in primary school and sometimes it would feel like, literally feel like I was walking through mud, walking to the school or even from the car to the classroom. Um, that's how I felt. I felt so fatigued, so unwell. And I'd always look around me and see all the little chirpy mums and all dressed and ready and, you know, dressed in their yummy mummy sports clothes or or workwear or just whatever and I was just struggling um, and felt so unwell and just it was horrible and sometimes <laughs> but I would always turn up so I would even go to the Monday morning assemblies um, and make the biggest effort to go and it was you know I felt it was important and important to my kids and Sometimes I would feel like um, the t uh, or like, you know, I would wave to the bus, you know, when they go to camp and all that sort of thing. Like, <laughs> um, you know, and I would really, really try my best. And I remember the one morning I didn't go to assembly, both my kids in different years of schooling won an award that day <laughs> at assembly. And, and it's like, I'll never forgive myself for this one day, but I had such a terrible migraine. There's no way I could have attended uh, and it was such bad luck that that was the day not only one kid but two got an award. Oh, my God. Anyway, but what can you do? I did try. Um, I remember also feeling like um, because I was, you know, a full-time mum, 
I did do some small casual work um, teaching English to kids for like, you know, one half a day in the week. And then during the week I would do corrections just whenever I could. Um, and so I was always, um, you know, present. And I remember this one day, my son said, can I please, can I please um, come to the bus? The bus was going somewhere for the day at school. And can I please <laughs> come and like, you know, wave at the bus and all that. So I remember saying, but it's not an actual um, camp. It's just some kind of day half excursion thing. And um, I don't think that other parents will be there. And he was like saying, no, no, you will come. So I came, no other parent was there. And the teachers are looking at me like, what is this woman doing? She has no life. She needs to go get a job. <laughs> Or, you know, because they're there every day. And I, I remember that, you know, there was a teacher who'd popped out a baby and went to work two weeks later. <laughs> and, you know, or other ones that have primary school, school age kids or, or, you know. And I would feel like this. And I was so embarrassed for a start because I'm standing there waving. But I did it for my child. I suffered through the embarrassment, waved at my child. I was absolutely inside of myself dying of embarrassment and shame and went home, had a coffee and drama sorrows. Um, but, um, but, oh, well, I was there for my child, you know? (laughs) So, um, I remember comparing myself to others as in thinking, you know, or working mums and feeling terrible about that. Like I'm not, and it's ridiculous because my true innate, um, want and desire and naturalness was to be there with the kids. And that for me, it's, uh, and this is my personal viewpoint. Uh, I really believe that children need their mums in there, uh, especially those first sort of five, six years of their life, you know, before they go to school, but even during their primary school years to be around or as much as possible. Um, and that's my personal value. And that's what I feel is, nat- is natural. You see it in nature. Cubs need to be around their, their you know, their mums and then they, you know, grow their legs and start to grow their independence and, and that's all good. So that was my, um, you know, even without migraines, it's what I wanted to do. But my sort of my point here is just um, how difficult it was being unwell. I just felt, I guess your your self-esteem feels so like um, horrible because you just feel like one big giant mess inside of yourself. And at the same time, you feel that, you know, good and right that you're doing the right thing. (laughs) And I would often look at other people like other mums like I've mentioned or on TV and I still do this constantly to this day actors you know which I know we all know they're actors <laughs> but um and just think they look so well or that person looks so well or they could actually do that job all day without feeling unwell I would constantly be thinking and comparing with myself um Not in a way so much as I'm just using that term comparing loosely because I'm really not someone otherwise that compares myself with others and I'm not a jealous type person and all of that. It's more to do with um, having this, I I call it like a filter over me. For a start, there's a filter of unwellness. Anyone can have a filter over them, right? It's your filter of your life experience. So for example, um, you know, if you if you felt you were fat when you were younger, that's your filter and you'll see the world through that filter and you'll see that through other people. So um, my filter that I'm talking about here is that unwellness filter and also not just unwellness, but how you look when you're unwell versus well. And then um, and then so when I see other people that just look well or normal um, that um, also you know, um, dressed well and, you know, did their hair and their makeup because that's all like takes a lot of time and energy. I'm pretty low maintenance. Like when I think I have to straighten my hair or something, I'm like, oh God, you know, (laughs) and also like I think of it physically that I have to lift my arm up and down and how that will feel on my neck. And then also just that it's a waste of time when I could be doing something for my work. (laughs) Right. Um, so, um, but on top of that, just that whole unwellness thing, seeing, other people just you know looking great and being able to work all day or 40 hour a week and come home and cook dinner and race around with their kids and I'm just exhausted even thinking about it and I already do a lot um, as it is just working from home so that's my filter so um, one of the reasons that I'm saying all these things too is just um, not only just to get to know me better and 
my experience to share that with you but also you know there are elements that you can relate to in your small way and actually one of the other things that I do compare myself with is when I see other um you know like successful um businesswoman women entrepreneurs or or spiritual people like you know putting out um you know courses or programs or um you know doing lots of work or podcasts and videos and all that stuff and when I feel like um I struggle so much to get there it's just such a horrible feeling and I don't feel um bad wishes for any of those people I think that's that's awesome what they're doing and and the more the better um it's just for my personal situation I just see what I can't get to and 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 it feels like then it becomes this giant thing and this giant block but at the same time I know that I need that I need to surrender which I do I give it all up to God and um with grace and I know that it's all happening in divine timing and that can be so frustrating being an Aries um as well where it's like um want to you know I I already see a future vision and I want to be there already I want to be there with all of the all the stuff that I want to do and I can't get there yet I can't even get to the first thing done but I know I will so this is not to say by all means that I'm such a slow worker or that nothing will ever happen and I'm unreliable all that stuff oh I just hate that feeling cuz I'm super reliable um it's it's all coming and it's all happening and and that feels amazing and i can truly say that i know that from the every fiber of my being um and but this is just something that i think about so much so i guess this is my way of sharing it with you and when it comes to work i would absolutely try my best um i have a you know excellent work ethic and all of that but it has been a struggle uh, the teaching job of children, teaching children English um, on weekends on like a half day um, was really helpful because it starts um, in the middle of the day and often my migraines would be more concentrate the, the biggest pain would be more in the mornings or earlier on and I had so many migraine days while I had to go to work um, and I would just try to recover the best I could before I drive um, to work. And it's not easy to go places, even just do groceries when you're in, in this. And I've had to do lots of things because life goes on like the world doesn't stop and you just have to. So you're feeling unwell and you still have to do these things. And of course, I would take a sick day when I need to, but... But I tried as much as possible not to. Um, and also, you know, we really needed that little bit of extra income, um, you know, just for basic things like petrol and groceries and so on. Um, and yeah, I, I put a bit of pressure on myself to, to, to do it. And I remember there was a couple of times where I really regretted that I went to work with a migraine. I'd have to drive for um you know about 30 30 40 minutes um which is hard you have to focus um really hard on driving uh just focus 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 and then um, I remember arriving in the car park and just bursting into tears and calling my husband saying I'm an idiot why the hell did I go to work today <laughs> I I can't, I've got so much pain I did not know how I'm going to do this um and so and teaching and you know to kids your kids are you know full on um so you know, it's not like you can just quietly sit there and say, shut up <laughs> and do your work. Um, it's very interactive and, you know, they're right up in your face. So um, I really did struggle a lot with that. Um, so that is also why working from home and starting my spiritual business has been like so amazing for me, not only because that's my true soul's calling and something that I truly love and I could work on slowly over time. But also um, it means that I can have session times that suit my family schedule and my migraine schedule. So for me, you know, I can't do anything in the early mornings um, because even if I don't have a migraine, I often just wake up not feeling great um, or sore bones or a sore neck or something. And I need that extra time to sort of be okay. Um, and if it's a migraine day, um, I absolutely have gone through so many years. If I have a client booked, I put myself under so much stress about it. 
I feel horrible to let someone down and to cancel on somebody. It was an absolute nightmare for me. And because I'm a super, (laughs) as I said before, like, you know, reliable person and all of that. Um, And I wouldn't want anyone to think otherwise. Um, And I take my job so seriously, (laughs) Um, you know, and and I'm so hard on myself. So I would set up these um, on my notes on my phone, just like a message I could quickly write to someone if I had a terrible migraine. So just to, you know, say, I'm really sorry, but we need to, I'll need to cancel today and reschedule. So that because I'm also even just looking at my phone and writing a message is really hard if you have a migraine. So it was just my easy way to manage um, the pain and work, um, but also my mental, emotional state because I would lie in bed all day feeling so stressed or on mornings where I had to decide, am I okay to work or not? That can be really, really hard assessing your level um, of can I work through the pain today? Can I work through the unwellness or not? Is it going to get worse? Is it going to get better or stay the same? And you can't always predict it. So sometimes I would predict it well, other times terribly, and I'd make the mistake. Um, So I have persevered and worked through many migraine and unwellness days. When I, and in terms of my spiritual work, when I turn up to a session, you have me 120%. I'm there for you. Um, Many clients would never know that I had been unwell that day, that morning, that night, or even during the session. Um, And I had to experiment a bit with that is what level can I actually open up my psychic senses and be able to do this work and do energy work under this condition because it's very important to me to be clean energetically for the client and also, um, you know, in terms of your ability and to be able to go there and um, pull out that information. So I have my levels and I've sort of worked out my own way of working through this (laughs) Um, and and assessing um, my state on the day, I guess. Um, So that's why also I, um, you know, nowadays I, working mostly on my Spiritual Course Academy, I have session times available for clients. Um, And I have a pretty good record of not cancelling. And then when I've had to, I feel pretty terrible. But I've gotten better at it. But I don't think anyone would understand the torture that I've put myself through, (laughs) um, you know, in this whole process. Sometimes when I was just going through migraine after migraine and feeling miserable and I started to see probably about a decade ago that it was having an impact on my face when I'm uh, so often with my migraines not always uh, I get like a droopiness on my right side or one side and just this kind of feeling of like swollen eyelids and you can just see on my face that I'm unwell Um, and so sometimes I would joke to myself it's like this obsessed photos I would take photos (laughs) of me and my migraine because you have to understand this is miserable from you know, all hours of the night, tossing and turning in bed, not being able to sleep, and it continues in the early morning, and, and it can continue for however long during the day. Um, and it's just this miserable, horrible <laughs> existence. And um, so I would take photos sometimes um, of that. It's like almost like proof to see, 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 you know. And um, and so I would just, I just just make a silly name on the photo folder, like you know, and that's six face obsession or something like that to me it's so evident if not on my face then my disposition as an empath and intuitive I will sense that so quickly in another person even if they're disguising it you know like I often do like with makeup or you know just trying to like blend in and and um you know be there around for people without creating attention to yourself um But I really suffered a lot internally, like emotionally, mentally, and just sort of as an empath um, in terms of um, someone comes over and you're having coffee and so on and they just don't see it. It's so bizarre to me because it's so obvious. It could be a school mum picking up the kid, but instead of, you know, picking them up in two minutes, they stand at the door for half an hour and I'm, I'm absolutely in agony or... Um, I just don't feel well and I'm just like persevering through the conversation and can't wait for them to leave and I don't understand how it's not obvious and I'm or if they're chatty I can't get a word in edgewise just to say I'm sorry I'm I'm unwell um, or I need to go or whatever 
oh, that used to bother me so much. Um, I don't understand it because when you see and sense as an empath and intuitive other people's pain and they don't see it in you, it's just bizarre to me. It's the same for when you're feeling emotionally down and vulnerable or, or, or whatever. And, um, you know, so that's why I'm sharing that as well for all of you who can really relate and connect with that because we see and experience and feel people so deeply. And when it's not done in return, um, sometimes maybe we just need that um, and it's not to say that everything is um, tick for tack it's more in terms of um, the value that we feel in being seen and heard and tuned into you know um, and and connected with on on that deeper level like like we do so willingly naturally and uh, unconditionally compassionately with others and that in return has led to so much suffering so I mentioned earlier there's a different um, levels of severity for migraines so um, on the in the really super bad ones um, sometimes uh, so you can um, you know have nausea and, and vomit and so on but outside of that um, it's it's just this I can't explain it but yes, you think all these things, uh, just like anyone who's going through a terrible, you know, you think thoughts, you think not nice thoughts. So I have thought things like, I just want to shoot my head <laughs> because the pain is that unbearable that you literally want to get a gun and shoot it. And it's not saying, I know I'm not <sighs> suicidal, uh, but it's just thoughts that go through your head. Um, sometimes because I have this associated pain that's like on my top shoulder, sort of top of my back, and it's this, I can't explain this pain, but then it connects, it's a severe pain and it connects um, up my skull and up my neck and somewhere in my head, depending on my face, depending on how it is on the day, the position. And um, I have thought about slicing it with a knife, that pain, because it's, it's, often, it's always around that same area in my back and I just want to get rid of it. And I know that sounds really terrible and no I would never do that <laughs> they're just the thoughts that go through your head because you're in that much pain it's absolutely unbearable um, and then at other times it's quite chronic but not that severity um, and then there's ones where I try to do I can get through my day and try to do things like try to vacuum the house and it's still pretty horrible and miserable but I, you know, try to do some work and try to work through it. And probably when um, I'm someone who probably has a good threshold of pain from this, and so I still try to persevere and do what I can. And other times I recognise that I really just need to rest. And then that gets frustrating because if many days in a row, um, you know, go on and on, um, then I feel guilty or horrible or terrible, like I should be doing something. Or like the most annoying one sometimes is that it was not a fun rest so I couldn't enjoy me time or you know I couldn't enjoy just spending some time resting in a way where it's like ah oh, this is great <laughs> you know um, or do things for myself or read a book or nothing like that it's just wasted days wasted hours that's that's how I would feel about it when I have all these things to do um, so last year, so there have been times I've almost like gone on my knees and said to God, you know, the angels, why? Like, please, you know, I have so much work to do in this life and so much to give and, um, you know, this purpose and knowledge and I want to share it and all this stuff I want to do and why am I so debilitated and disabled from this and why? Like, take it away from me, you know, I have learned my lessons and I'm done with it you know there have been times with that and so one of the times was um, sort of three quarters through last year and not long after I received these emails from a headache uh, clinic but I often just ignore them because they're boring and anything scientific and medical is difficult to read <laughs> but anyway I still kept getting them and, and would save them <laughs> to read one day um, but then one day I was like I have to read this so I read it and it was a program that a doctor was about to undertake so I joined it it was a health program for specifically based for people suffering from migraines 
and it was health oriented as in about um, education so which was great because would you believe it but doctors only train for four hours when they do their medical training at university four hours for migraines so that's just why <laughs> that would explain when I go to doctors I feel so frustrated and disappointed and I've gone to doctors and just cried or left feeling miserable um, they don't really know anything much and they just want to prescribe you drugs basically and nobody really cares about it and they just don't get it I've even cried at the pharmacy because <laughs> these are just my worst moments by the way I don't just walk around crying <laughs> this is just rare moments so <laughs> that would just probably sound so silly but I'm just like sharing it all with you now <laughs> or not all of it but you know whatever comes to me um yeah just because I felt miserable because I had to drive in pain to get my mug to get migraine um pills um and because I've been so unwell all day I just literally just chuck some clothes on and I feel miserable and sometimes I would think I look like someone on drugs or something like that and I just feel awful and yeah so anyway I've had those moments um and so I started this program and it's all about vitamins and clean eating and a sort of Mediterranean paleo style um, diet which specializes particularly on migraines uh, with a really great doctor who's a osteopath and a physiotherapist and well trained who has a special interest and passion which is unheard of in migraines because I pretty much slammed doors on many doctors and just felt, felt really frustrated including all the thousands of specialists I've seen including neurologists and um, neuro um, surgeons and um, you know treatments I've had whether it was osteo, physio, chiro, um, you know you name it and uh, but this person is just super nice and sort of quite conscious as well and just um, you know really believes in, in clean eating anyway and, but not in a way that it's annoying to me <laughs> because sometimes that can be super annoying and sort of confronting and triggering so um, the program was really really helpful and so I did that for a few months um, towards the end of last year and um, now I'm just trying to integrate that but I feel I just need more time um, because I don't think that these sort of miracles happen overnight so yes I did notice some um, feeling a bit better in terms of inflammation so for example I was really for years now walking around with a heat pack on my shoulders and around my neck like all so much every single day there wouldn't be a day that I wouldn't um, if I had to go drive somewhere I would like put it on while I'm driving um, and I would feel horrible with, without it if I was to do, do a session with a client I'd have it on around my neck not always but sometimes um, right until <laughs> um, right until I have to speak with the client and then that's just, sorry while I'm preparing <laughs> and then I'll take it off um, anyway and so um, it has helped with that and um, uh, and in one month there was an improvement in my migraines um, and then um, I went through sort of some, a miserable patch too so I'm just really now um, focusing this year on my health and keeping up this sort of this really lifestyle and the, the first month was really difficult really difficult um, but now it's much easier um, it's still challenging but it's way better so Anyway, so we'll see, we'll see. I'm gonna give it sort of this year to, and I think it's a total lifestyle change anyway for life, which is great. Um, but in terms of improving my health and well-being, specifically my migraines, I'm still, I'm still getting them. So right now, as I was my first good day for about 12 days in a row, and it was really disappointing to me because after the, what I was trying to get, back, get to before was it in January, you know, a whole month with the kids at home and a small little trip away. Um, 
I really wanted to hone down back on let's get things rolling let's get my courses you know done and all the work I have to do and um, starting on the first day they go back to school and then boom <laughs> migraine day after migraine day after migraine day with these like neck and all these other issues so yeah just I felt horrible and like de desolifying <laughs> to me um, but I'm getting there so I guess one of the reasons why I'm making this is one just for my own catharsis so thanks for listening I don't expect anyone to listen to this whole thing um, it feels a bit long now it's just me sort of explaining my story it's also just to explain because you know why I can't always get things done or in a time frame that I would like um, anyone who's sort of been waiting for courses to come out it's absolutely 100% happening um, and I've actually still amongst everything I feel like I've still done so much work it's just that behind the scenes kind of stuff that you don't get to see um, so I'm, I'm, I feel good about that and I feel horrible otherwise absolutely horrible um, but I have to understand that that's not my my fault and I'm trying the absolute best I can um, so one foot forward I put um, a screenscaver on my phone that says small steps every day and I'm just trying the best I can so um, thank you for your understanding and I don't like to feel pressure which is mostly self-imposed but sometimes I think oh no you know people are going to be waiting for a video or, or the course and, and I'm not and I kind of can't and then I just it's this horrible cycle of of, of taught self-torture so um, and I would talk myself out of it so it's probably all just me in my own head but I'm in Aries and we are in the head and that's probably why I get headaches and migraines but anyway um, thank you for allowing me to share this with you and another reason I wanted to make it which I haven't even got to yet is for all the people out there who are suffering with physical pain even emotional and, and mental torture you know energetic all of it any time whether it was for a small amount of time or if you're regularly going through some kind of chronic unwellness then I am with you I hear you I see you no one sees us but you know some of us do so <laughs> this is dedicated to you and I know you're out there and I've had some clients and friends and contacts who um, through our spiritual community who have shared things like that before so I know that you're out there so this is for you um, everything's for a reason and we'll get there one day at a time and so just keep persevering keep putting one foot forward in front of the other and you know um, when you do have those off days when you have to rest something often is happening behind the scenes too so one aspect that I'll just end with is the spiritual aspect of all the changing energies and everything that's happening across the globe um, and the energies coming in and out the redirection I'm just receiving now of our life path and where we're going where we need to be and the higher version of ourselves always comes through and involves when we get through that patch so if you're going through a bad patch of any type in your life right now or you have in the past no matter how short or long term the message always is it's about that transformation and I'm getting really strong energy with that now the sun's shining and I feel a little tingly that's what it's about so it's allowing yourself to be wherever it is and if that means you're dead weight on the couch watching Netflix and you can't help it <laughs> it's because you're emotionally gone or <laughs> mentally screwed or physically down or combination of all or whatever it is just do whatever it needs to be at that time and you will get there so and I will just say too that sometimes it's even just having insomnia or restless nights not sleeping well and um, that's hard enough as it is to function the next day whether you need to be doing anything or having to go to work it's terrible um, and it can really muck things up but a lot of light has been coming in through um, recently and a lot of people are having these restless nights and insomnia but for people who suffer from chronic unwellness it's, it can be really debilitating because you're when your issues flare up during the night um, I've gone through so many periods of that so I might be in pain at like three, four, five, six, you know, seven in the morning. And then by the time sort of everyone is up and your day needs to go by, you've gone through this hell hole, <laughs> this horrible hurricane of, of pure like pain and exhaustion. And then 
you have to function and no one might even realize that you've just gone through this torture that night before and that can really feel shitty <laughs> but anyway so you know all we can do is one day one step at a time so keep going whatever plight you are in sending you lots of love thank you for listening thank you kindly um, and have a beautiful day